My father hid the mascara from the world and I've been trying to learn how we did it. Did what? Made something invisible. Invisible, huh? Well, they probably just used After Effects. I mean, you can do anything in After Effects. Oh, that's not attached to me. Hi, Action Movie Dad here, and you're looking great today. Today the subject is invisibility, and there's a variety of ways to depict invisible or cloaked things on screen, and the most common way in the digital era is displacement mapping. It's a kind of distortion that represents the volume of a cloaked object or character. I'm going to focus on this invisible jet from Wonder Woman 1984, but keep in mind that you can use similar techniques to create practically any invisible thing you want. First step gather some free materials. I like to stop at Pix here to grab some royalty-free images. I'll search Ariel, City, Night, and save a few candidates that I can use later as my distant city at night. And now I'd like a 3D model of a jet to use as my displacement layer. Now, looking at this toy reference, I can get a mild idea of what Diana's jet looks like, but it really just needs to have a similar silhouette. I use Sketchfab all the time to look for 3D models, and I finally learned about the Cinema 4D Sketchfab extension, which allows me to browse Sketchfab and import a model right within Cinema. Today I'm using this fighter jet Nye by Neil. Nye Nye 1997? Thank you, Neil. I'll save this as a Cinema 4D file, and now I can do just a little modification. And now it's time to hit the... Comfort zone, um, which is After Effects. So let's create a virtual environment using as few pieces as possible. I'll open up one of my free nighttime images in its own comp, and now I'll apply the effect CC Power Pin. Click Unstretch, then I'll disable it, and then move these four pins to where they visually align with some kind of perspective of the ground plane. Now, when I enable the effect, you'll see the ground snap to this sort of square view. Now, I'll render out this frame, and now I'll open it in Photoshop. Now, this asset is going to be tiled, so it doesn't need to be all that big. So, I'll start by scaling it down, and then, to make this a perfectly tileable swatch, I use the good old trick of Filter, Other, Offset. And now I offset this pattern, which means the sides are perfectly wrapped, and you can easily identify this visible seam here in the middle now. Now I select all of this area around the seam using a semi-jagged line. I'm trying to kind of use the contours of these buildings. And then I will run Content-Aware Fill. And look at that. The seam is way less obvious now. I'll save that out as a card, and then I'll bring it back into After Effects. Now watch how simple this is. Uh, for clarity, we'll start with a new HD comp. We'll bring in this card as a 3D layer and lay it flat. And now I'll add CC Repetile. Now I can expand this card outward until I've got a bunch of real estate to plan my shot with. And while this looks like kind of a big goopy mess uh, from here, watch what happens when I get to the approximate right angle that the original card was viewed from. You know, a little better, right? Now, I'm aware that this looks a little funky, but I honestly think it's going to be fine in the end. And you know what? It's weird that there's only a road in this one direction, so I'm going to jump back into Photoshop, kind of grab this little street piece here, and I'll just duplicate that and uh, turn it 90 degrees, and then I'll update my card in After Effects. And boom, we've got roads running in both directions. And now that I've got my camera at a reasonable angle for this card, I'm going to add a 3D null, and then I'll attach this camera to it. Now with a few keyframes, over the course of the shot, I can have this camera travel straight along the X axis here. Knowing this move is perfectly lateral will really help when we do our next step. Now we need some other layers to add some parallax and dimension to this thing. So. I'll create a new comp called Clouds uh, 3000 by 1500. Inside this comp, I will create two solids. On this top layer, I'll add an instance of fractal noise. 
and then I'll adjust the brightness and contrast until I get kind of something that looks like a cloud pattern. And then to knock it off of this uh, even looking fractal noise, I'm gonna add some turbulent displace. And you'll see that made it a little bit swirlier, just kind of prettier clouds. We'll adjust the size until we get something like this. Look how lovely fractal noise is. And now we'll hide that solid and work on this bottom solid where we will add another instance of fractal noise. But this time we're gonna turn its contrast down pretty low until it's just basically this kind of cloudy gray and white looking thing. And the reason why we did these two layers like this is because we're going to set this top one as a luma mat for the bottom one. So I'll rename that luma and this bottom one, I guess the shading. And then I'll tell layer two that layer one is its luma mat. And look at that, we've got some pretty clouds on transparent. If I jump back to my 3D uh, city streets comp, I can add my clouds layer as a 3D object, flatten it out and pull it up off the ground a little bit. I'm going to actually use two layers of clouds. This will be sort of the low uh, wispy ones. Uh, and then I'll also add some that are up closer to the camera that will travel faster as the camera moves along. So let's take a look at that. And now you can start to see what I'm planning to put together. And admittedly, it's in a pretty lousy state right now, but that's why I have my friend Supercomp who's gonna help me fix this all. Because After Effects has a different render order for its 3D layers, uh, I need to pre-comp these. So really simply, I'll go through each of these layers and then I'll pre-compose the layer by itself, moving all attributes to a new composition. And then I'll check the collapse transformation switch. So just that exact process for these other two layers. So now all of these layers are still reacting to this camera, but they're also disguised as 2D layers so they can come perfectly into SuperComp. To utilize SuperComp, I select these three layers and then go to Effect, RG, VFX, SuperComp. Now, in case you're new to SuperComp, think of it as a mini supercharged compositing tool where all the layers are aware of what's behind them. I'll show you why that's really cool. So you can see my three layers that I'm using to build this image right here. I'll hide the top two and focus on the city layer. When I click this plus, it brings up a menu of really common compositing tools. In this case, I would like to add some glow to this city. So I'll go to optical glow and I can add a beautiful uh, wide optical glow to the city layer. Now let's turn on our clouds and they look silly right now. They, they got nothing going on really. So we'll open up the radial menu and I'll select haze. Now what haze does is it blends all the colors behind this layer in front of the layer. And as I turn this amount up to pretty high, look how amazing these clouds begin to look. Next, I can add some blur behind, which means that the city behind these clouds will get a little bit blurred out. And lastly, I'll add some diffusion to these clouds too. Turn the size up, spread it out a little bit just like that. And now look how much more married to this scene this first layer of clouds looks. Since I like my result, I can right click on this layer and say uh, copy all effects and then click on my layer above and say paste effects. And now that layer will turn on with those same effects happening to this foreground cloud element. And watch this. And in speaking genuinely, this is the beauty of Supercomp. In fact, Supercomp is so cool that basically we could finish the whole rest of the shot within the Supercomp interface. Let's add a new solid called Mirror and add the effect Mirror 3. When Mirror opens, you get this default wrinkly plane. And we don't want a plane, we want a jet. So uh, here in uh, basic geometry, we select 3D model, add, and select that jet model. We'll twirl open 3D model settings and click create null. And now we can add some keyframes for this jet to start in frame here. And at the very end, kind of have proceeded off to the end here. I'll also add a few uh, rolling keyframes to this uh, jet. So it'll do this graceful roll like that and then kind of settle 
at the end. Pretty painless. Uh, we'll also go down to our ambient occlusion settings and uh, give this jet a little bit more contrast using the ambient occlusion. I would now love to add some contrails coming off of the wings of this jet as it spins through the air. And the way I'm going to do that is with particular and some light emitters, a lot like we did in our Sonic episode. So we'll add a solid called particular, and then we'll add a new light, a point light that I'll name emitter one. When I add this light, everything changes because uh, they're all 3D layers. Uh, so in the end, I'm actually going to make that layer invisible anyway. But for now, I am going to parent it to the mirror controller null and then zero out its position. After it's zeroed out, this light is right in the middle of this jet. And I'm just going to kind of by sight, try to align it out to the tip of one of these wings. And uh, once we've got one light in place, we will duplicate that emitter. And I'll just try making this X value negative. And there we go, that should put it right uh, at the front tip of that other wing. And now comes the magic. I can switch off these two lights so everything goes back to the way it was looking before. And then in my particular layer, I will change the emitter type to lights. And look at that, particles are being spewed by the two lights. Now, the reason Particular knew to do that was because of these naming conventions. Right here under light naming, choose names, you can assign a prefix to whatever different type of light you're going to use as a particular emitter. The default emitter size is 500, but I actually want it to be zero, just a little pinpoint. And I'll change my velocity down to like 10, pretty low. And for my particle type, these should be cloudlets. Down under rendering, we can enable the motion blur, which will look nice for these. And let's take a little preview of that. Look how beautiful we've got contrails literally coming off of our plane as it swirls through the air, all pretty automatically, which is really great. Now this plane is flying perfectly along the X axis, and it looks a lot like the particles aren't trailing off of it fast enough compared to these foreground clouds. So I'm just going to cheat by going down to fast physics and opening up drift. Now drift replaces the traditional wind in trap code particular. So I'm going to turn this to a negative value to push the particles back behind the jet faster. A couple more tweaks to the size and opacity variation of these particles. And I am very happy with these contrails. So how do we now combine our mirror and particular layers into our super comp composite? Well, we click on the super comp layer, open panel, and here under source layer, as you can see, particular and mirror. Uh, we'll click plus to add mirror to this comp. And this may be a new feature to some of you, but under the layer type, there is the option to choose displacement. Now watch as I tweak this a little bit until I get a nice, subtle displacement ripple. Now let's integrate our particular layer. I'll click the plus and then I'll go left here to some presets. As I hover over any of these presets, you can see a little preview up here of what it may look like. And uh, whoa. Anyway, obviously it's really easy to get distracted by presets in Super Comp. Um, I'm going to exit out for just a second and take a look at how my comp is coming together. Now, one of the readability things about this plane is that it doesn't do really great uh, buried in all these clouds right here. You can't see it very well, but I have a very straightforward solution for that. You can always edit your layers down below Super Comp and they'll propagate themselves to it. So I'm going to select my foreground cloud layer and then apply the set matte effect. And as the matte, I'm going to take it from my mirror layer, its effects and presets, and then I'll check invert matte. And look what we have now. The mirror shape is holding out the foreground clouds as if the clouds can't exist where the jet exists. Pretty swell. And just out of curiosity, let me see what would happen if I applied that set matte to the lower level of clouds too. 
Wow, that's too strong. And it's reminding me, I see the clouds being kind of, you know, distorted in the background of the jet shape. So I'm going to go into super comp and I'm going to reorder these layers. Uh, instead of having mirror up here above these two clouds, I'm going to drag it down below them. All right, that's looking much cleaner. Um, in fact, a little bit too clean. Now, in theory, as this you know jet is parting through the clouds, there should be a little bit of a trail behind it. So there are a couple things we can do to add up to that effect. I go to my mirror layer and add CC radial fast blur. I put it over here and smear the layer backwards to give myself kind of a fake speed effect. And then I'll go back to my lower clouds, uh, enable that set matte effect again, and I'll add some radial fast blur here too, which will kind of push some of the uh, clouds back into the jet, but it'll make the jet more visible. This is all working pretty great, but I think that we need more of a holdout behind the plane, sort of a trail where it's broken the clouds apart. So to do that, very simple, add a solid, add particular. I'd like the particles to be coming off of the plane, so I can do that really simply by going over here to particular and clicking on the create null button, which will create a null as my particular emitter location. I can parent that to the body of this plane and zero it out. And now my particles are emitting right from the center of the plane. All I have to do is make these some slightly bigger and scattered opacity kind of particles that fade out after a second or so. Once I have that going for me, I can hide this particular layer. Now I can go down to my foreground cloud layer. I'll just highlight and duplicate my set matte effect, but I'll switch the source layer from mirror to this new particular body layer. And look at that, it's held out this little path right behind the plane. And then as always, my last step is to add a top adjustment layer and add magic bullet looks. I mean, I don't have to explain myself. You get, you get a, dozens of awesome looks that are you know, way cooler than what I was doing before. But, but now, because it's my shot, I can totally pretend that's where I was going the whole time. And uh, you can see uh, uh, the final result looks uh, something like this. And fake environments, displacement maps, 3D models in mirror. There's a lot of fun stuff we went over today. I know we were moving kind of quickly, so if you have any questions, please leave them below. And you can always reach out to us at Red Giant News or to me at Action Movie Kid. Thank you, beautiful humans, for spending some time with me today. And I'll see you next time. Oh, I could have said, I won't see you next time. The, the invisibility.